So let's start off with the Evercool Claw case. Now, this case is a midi sized case and the instructions are not the best instructions whatsoever. So what I'm gonna do is uh, show my expertise of about case uh, talking and reviewing. So we also have an RTX 2060 graphics card by Nvidia on the desk as well. But I'm not actually making a build. It's just basically talking about this case. But I am gonna light up the RGBs that come with this case, which is quite awesome. This case is 60 pound and this is a pretty awesome price and it is pretty hard to beat with the fans that you're gonna see later on in the video. But anyway, with the screws, I noticed that it's got a glass panel on the other side as well. And on here, the screws are really quite tough to uh, obtain to get off the glass. But I did have a rubber uh, washer missing out of it. But other than that, these bits have got bases of rubber on there to keep it secured to the glass. So that's pretty cool because then you don't want it to scratch the glass or anything like that. So just, just be mindful, it is gonna be tight. Anyway, I wanna get the plastic off of this glass. Actually, I'll get the plastic off afterwards. I'll leave it to the last minute. So it's a midi sized case. So you can fit an ATX case there, a mini ATX case, um, mini ATX, mini ATX motherboard, mini ATX motherboard here, and an ITX motherboard right here. But we've got seven expansion slots, so the graphics card can fit up to like 360 mil, no problem. And this is an RTX 2060. So imagine this is plugged in into the top board. This is how much room you've got. And then you can put like an AIO water cooling loop here as well. Um, so you can put a 280 on there and you can put a 240 uh, radiator on there. But as you can see, it comes with one 120 mil addressable RGB fan and two at the top addressable RGB fans. Normally on other cases, you get RGBs at the top and RGBs at the front and then like a normal standard fan at the back. But these are all exactly the same. Talking about RGBs, we do have a hub on the back. So the hub is a 10 port hub and you can connect as well via PWM as well to get the normal speed that you should want to obtain when you're actually trying to keep your computer nice and quiet. You can do that as well by connecting it. And then you've got all of these buttons as well. So you've got fan speed there, you've got mode, and then you've got LED speed as well. So you can change all the modes manually, but you do, can't, well, it does come with a remote control as well. It doesn't have like a little RF uh, receiver. It's just a, I don't know how it even works, to be honest with you. It's really quite cool, but I can aim it anywhere and it will literally turn the colors and it just works. So that's cool. Anyway, we've got two 3.5 inch hard drive for mechanicals at the bottom or 2.5 mechanical inch hard drives there, or you can have two SSDs there. You can have two SSDs or 2.5 inch mechanical hard drives there. But just to note that it hasn't got any rubber features. So if you do put a 2.5 inch mechanical hard drive, it might make a little bit of noise because it's on the back of the motherboard. Cables are nicely brought from the front and straight through to the gap there for a nice little grommet hole. But there's no rubber grommet holes there, but there's nothing there to cut you or anything like that. It does come with brass standoffs as well for the ATX motherboard, but this is for the slimmer motherboards and not for the wider motherboards. The wider motherboards will cover up from here and here, which is also included with the screws and cable tires and everything you need to obviously connect it all up. You've got a filter at the bottom as well, just a normal, not very great filter, but for 60 pounds, it's okay. So it's just a dust filter, really easy to clean. You've got a nice decent space for um, power supply as well, but there's no rule. It's like metal standoffs, but there's no standoffs, so it's rubber, so it just isolates the vibrations a little bit. Depends on what power supply you're gonna go with, but I guess you ain't gonna go with the most expensive because technically this is a case that's only 60 pound. And then you've got a few cut off tough points. So it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's about 12 of them in there. And then also, let me pull the front off real quick without trying to break anything. So the cables are attached to the front of the actual uh, case itself, which has got like these plugs that go straight in. They don't look like they're glued in. It looks like you can still prise them out, no problem whatsoever. And then obviously USB 3 and everything. And your RGBs are in there as well. And it has got like a decent width um, for cooling on the side there as well, uh, depending on what you're gonna put in the front there. As you can see, 
you can put 280 on there or 2140 radiator or 361 20 mil fans on there as well. On the top of this uh, mad beast claw case, we do have a power button, we have a reset button, we've got a USB 2 button, we've got a headphone jack, microphone jack, another USB 2 and a USB 3 and an LED button control switch. You've got a magnetic filter at the top where you can put in another two 120mm fans. No radiator support at the top, if I believe rightly. I think I'm going to check that real quick because I'm sure it's not... Or no, it might be. I think it is. Let me just check now. <laughs> So, my bad. At the back, you can put a 120mm radiator on the back there. And then obviously, uh, so AIO liquid cooling at the front and AI liquid cooling at the back, but no support at the top, only just for keep the fans nice and cool. So people, um, do you want to know the good news or the funny news? And the company is going to find it as bad news. Other than that, we do have airflow at the top, but I just realized the glass covers off that big airflow that you don't normally get from most cases. They're normally a little bit smaller and I'm sure there is no airflow at the front. There's like a handle like bit here, which a bit of cool air can pass through, but there's no other way of it coming through. So I would say that is a bit of a mistake there. I didn't see that even happening. It looks lovely, but we only got airflow at the top now and at the back. So we've got no cool air coming in. So it will definitely starve a little bit. And from here, uh, there's no real gap as well for the air to pass through. I haven't even got these on tight. Oh, that's really annoying. But other than that, <sighs> you're going to have to use more components that are not going to be heat related, which is obviously a bit of a, a problem because technically if it did have this just cut off the square, well, that little edge bit just gone, and it was kind of like merged in really nicely, then this could be the nice cool bit there to get a nice bit of cool air. Having a radiator here was not gonna suffice. It's gonna literally warm up and it's gonna give you problems. You're not gonna get performance because it's gonna run like a bag of like rubbish, basically. Anyway, you've got a little slot so you can slot up and down for the radiator or the other 120mm fan, adjustable fan that comes with it. You've got a little bracket that covers over. Um, on this case, yes. So you do get screw holes in there, but these are the ones I'm sure, yeah, you have to, you have to bend and break off, I think. Let me just check that. Yeah, you have to bend and break these off with those brackets. But for 60 pound, it's not too bad. You're not gonna be putting in the most demanding computer on unless you're unless you want to so let's turn on this computer and uh let's have a look what it looks like because it does look pretty cool all right so as you can see the claw it does look pretty cool i must admit this is more about aesthetics rather than cooling right so with this case you can also motherboard sync it so that means Obviously, it's addressable RGBs, which means it's the higher end of the RGB spectrum. So now I'm just going to literally, I'm just going to press some buttons. There we go. We've got a green stripey thing going on. We've got blue. Looks a bit slower. Oh, the RGBs, I must admit on here, are pretty like on point. Now, I know it's not all about RGBs, but it depends on how old you are and what you're trying to show off and everything like that with the RGBs. I think it does make the case look better, but it's all about it's suffocating the actual components inside with this, piece of, with this piece of glass on both sides. So there's no front intake at all. So there's no point putting an AIO in there. If I was gonna put an AIO in there, it'd be a 120 and I'd be looking at a Core i3 or a Core i5 at the most. And then obviously having some fans to dissipate the heat at the top there. But anyway, it does look nice. And I do like the fact that I can muck about with these LED things. I don't know what else I can do with it. Right, so mode. Right, we're doing something different now.
you know what? I'd, what sells me on this case is just the RGB um, like strip around the edges. It looks so minimalistic. This looks really beautiful and pretty. It reminds me of the AMD um, Ryzen. I can't remember what one it is, but it's one of those CPU coolers. It reminds me of one of them. And I love the fact, look at that. Oh, this is so cool. Nah, do you know what? I'll probably just buy this at £60 just for this because the, RG, the addressable RGB fans are just sick. I love it. Anyway, I hope this was enough and informant enough for you to like make sure, well, whether you want to buy this or not. Um, would I buy this case? Yes, I would buy this case, but only if I was using lower end components that weren't too... Um, well, I'll probably use a Ryzen in there. Ryzen CPUs are a little bit lower in uh, power. Uh, but I wouldn't go any further than a Core i3 or Core i5 or Ryzen uh, 2400G. I wouldn't go any higher than that. But it's not a bad case. I think it's all right. It's kind of well made. And well made in the features of like the RGB community and people that want an extra USB to connect to. Other than it's only got two USB 2s. You're lucky you got two USB 2s at £60 and then you've got like three different ways of like changing the RGB lights because this is what this is about. This is about RGB. It's not really about much of a case. It's a case that is one of the collections for AeroCall but you can have a lower budget end components in there and it'll still keep kind of cool. Anyway, subscribe. Leave a comment down below actually. Leave a comment down below what you think about this case. Would you buy this case and what you, your, your feelings are about this case. i like to know and I will reply back to you as soon as I can. Anyway, I'm Roger and I'm out. Peace out.